provides your needs. He may not have all your wants at the time of one, but the needs are there. Um, at, as Jenny will speak, everything that we need to have at the time when the accident occurred, God provided. An ambulance, a hospital close by, um, insurance to pay for it, to take care of things. And uh, I just when things don't look so good, um, just remember that God is taking care of you and that you may not see how or how he sets it up, but that he is there and doing it. My little guy's a little tired. He's been up since 530. <laughs> yeah, John's still in here. Everybody else has to get up then too. Um, he um, he is a lot more lively than this usually, but um, <laughs> when there's a lot of noise and a lot of people he doesn't know, it takes his brain so much longer to process who everybody is and try to figure out who everybody is that what happens is his brain shuts down to process all of that, and then when things are quieter, then he comes back. So later on after service, he'll probably just be putting on quite a little show. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> you know, like Wayne was talking about, God doesn't always provide you what you want, but he does provide you what you need. And sometimes the reason for that is not clear. Um, one of my first questions, God, was, of course, why? I mean, you're the God of all the universe, and you have to take my three-year-old, and you take the best part of him, and you leave me with just the shell? How was that fair? I did everything you asked me to do. I, I taught him about you. We read the Bible every day. John could point out Martha and Mary and Gabriel and, you know, everybody. He knew who everybody was. And Zacchaeus, that was his favorite. Um, and what did he call him? Zach, I can't remember how he said it. Anyway, he loved Zacchaeus. And so I just don't understand, God, the, why you need, I did everything you told me to do and you're still gonna take the kid away from me. As my dad pointed out one time, he said, yeah, but my gosh, can you imagine if this happened to a kid whose parents weren't as loving as you are, and who would not have taken as good a care of him, so. In one of my long conversations with God, he did say, I, I needed you, because I knew that in the midst of this, you and Wayne would turn to me. And I'm thinking, could you not have used me for something else? <laughs> I turned to you for all kinds of stuff. Can you not pick something up? But um, he told me, he said, you're just going to have to trust me for right now. Um, and he did point out that he completely went ahead of us and orchestrated the entire accident. Uh, we were driving to Wayne's grandmother's house, and the car started to fishtail and then spun around and hit the concrete median and a uh, park patrol car. And God said, did you notice that on that day um, there was only one hole in traffic and it was to your left? Yeah, and I remember praying as we spun, God, please don't let anybody be to my left because we would have hit them and taken them out. And, um, and he said, and did you notice that there was a patrol car that was right there waiting for you that had already called an ambulance before you ever started spinning because another lady had skidded off but wasn't hurt? Mm, okay. <laughs> and he said, and did you also notice that the people who happened to be behind you, one of them was a military EMT? And um, so God set everything up. He also set up our accident to happen right near the exit to Brenner's Children's Hospital, which is one of the best children's hospitals in the city. And um, he had a neurosurgeon and a pediatric surgeon right there already on Christmas Day with no surgery scheduled, so John was able to go right in. And um, through the whole thing, it was just, I never had, I never had a feeling that I would lose John. I knew that I would have him. Um, and 
just nothing that was happening around me made any sense at all. And God just kept saying, you need to be still. You need to be still. And as the night wore on, it turned into, Jenny, be still. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> get out of my way. I'm working here. And, uh, but we did get to keep John. And, um, and Wayne and I both prayed that night. We said, if, if you just give us back his smile and his laugh, everything else we can deal with. And so May of last year, we got his smile and his laugh back. And he is a very happy little boy when he's not all shut down. We also went to go see Mickey Mouse this weekend, so he's just out of his mind. But um, <laughs> he is a very happy little boy. He's a very busy little boy. He is a regular four-year-old who is stuck in this container that can't quite get out yet. So we are praying that, you know, God will give him some sort of an outlet. God did tell us, you know, I begged him to please, please let me hear mommy again. Please let Wayne hear daddy again. And so far, not yet, but God did say, I will make sure that he can communicate with you. And so Wayne and I really have no trouble understanding what it is that he wants. And we may be misunderstanding, I don't know, but we seem to all kind of understand one another, whereas other people are going, is that a happy sound? Is, is he crying? Is he upset? Is something wrong? But um, so he does communicate with us. We've been blessed with all kinds of therapists and doctors and nurses that come in and out of our house every day. Um, we have Dottie the therapy dog. That was Dottie up there. She comes once a week to come and play with John, and he'll do things for Dottie that he will not do for anybody else. And, um, and we've just been really blessed. And I know that we hear a lot about the government misusing our money, but I want to let you know that your taxes go into a program for Medicaid called Cap C, and that's for children like John. So he does get Cap C, and your tax dollars pay for all of his doctor's visits and his medicines and his therapists and his equipment, like his wheelchair. He has a stander at home where he can stand up and play. Um, you pay for all of things like pull-ups and feeding tubes and food and everything like that. So we're very grateful that you work and pay your taxes. Um, and we just thank you so much for letting us come and, and share about our kid. Isn't he cute? <laughs> <laughs> um, and we are continuing to pray, though, that he'll get to go back to Levine. We're trying to get him in in the next week or two while he's tracked out of school so that he can play with Baker some more. And um, if y'all just keep praying about that, we'd appreciate it.